Hi there, Mr. Hulk. I'm here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 5, The Power of Exponential Growth. Classwork opening exercise says, Two equipment rental companies have different penalty policies for returning a piece of equipment late. Company 1. On day 1, the penalty is $5. Day 1, the penalty is $5. This is in dollars. On day two, the penalty is $10. On day three, the penalty is $15. On day four, the penalty is $20, and so on, increasing by $5 each day the equipment is late. So I'm going to finish filling this in, make sure that none of these get skipped, and they don't, so we're just going to keep adding 5, 25, 30, 35, 40, Okay, so I filled in column one or company one for out 15 day penalties. Company two on day one, the penalty is one cent. And this is in dollars as well. Let me change colors. This is in dollars. 0 0.01 dollars is a penny. And then it goes to two cents on day two. Day two. The penalty is two cents. On day three, the penalty is four cents. On day five, the penalty is, on day four, the penalty is eight cents. On day four, the penalty is eight cents. And so on, doubling each additional day. So a penny, two cents, decimals right here, four cents, eight cents, and so on. Jim rented a digger from company two. So he rented it from this company because he thought it had a better late return policy. Seems so. If I return that four days late, I'm only gonna pay eight cents late return fee. And if I rent it from company one and returned it four days late, I'd be paying 20 bucks, big difference, okay? So the job he was doing with the digger took longer than expected, but it did not concern him because the late penalty seemed so reasonable. When he returned the digger 15 days late, he was shocked by the penalty fee. What did he pay? And what would he have paid if he had used company one instead? So he is going to return this thing late, 15 days. So we're going to continue this by doubling. So on day five, it's 16 cents. And on day six, it's 32. And 32 times two is 64. And 64 times two is $1.28. And 128 times two is 256. And 256 times two is 512. And 512 times two is 1024. And 1024 doubled is 2048. And 2048 doubled is 4096. And then I double that. I've got to be careful now because I'm over 50 and I'm going to be carrying values over. So 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 9 times 2 is 18. Plus 1 is 19. Carry the 1. And 4 times 2 is 8. So 8192. 2 times 2 is 4, 9 times 2 is 18, carry the 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, and 2 times 8 is 16. Okay, so there you see why he was shocked. It cost him $163.84 after 15 days late, whereas company 1, it would have only cost him $75. So it says, company. which company has a greater 15-day charge? It was company two. Describe how the amount of the late change changes from any given day to the next successive day in both companies one and two. Okay, so for company one, the change from any given day to the next successive day is an increase by five. For company two, the change from any given day to the next successive day is an increase by a factor of two. Part C says, how much would the late charge have been after 20 days under company two? Okay, so without having a formula in place yet, I'm just going to answer the question. So this would be 16 days, 17 days, 18 days, 19 days, and 20 days. 
I could either take time out here and find an equation that would make this true and then just simply substitute into my equation, but until we get there, I'm just going to keep adding. So this is 8, 6, 7, 2, and 3. Okay, 8 times 2 is 16, 12 and 1 is 13, 5, 5, 6. Okay, 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1, 6, uh, 0, 1, 13, 10, 62. This would be 4, 12, 2, 6, 2. And 8, 4, 2, 4, 12, 5. So after 20 days, it would be $5,242.88. Did I do something wrong? Let's see. 36, yes, that's a 7. Uh, double 36 is 72. 4, 7, that should be a 5. And... 72, so 2 times 2 is 4, 7 times 2 is 14, and that should be an 8. So it's 5,242.88 after 20 days. All right. Example 1. Folklore suggests that when a creator of the game of chess showed his invention to the country's ruler, the ruler was highly impressed. He was so impressed, he told the inventor to name a prize of his choice. The inventor, being rather clever, said he would take a grain of rice on the first square of the chessboard, two grains of rice on the second square of the chessboard, four on the third, eight on the fourth, and so on, doubling the number of grains of rice for each successive square. The ruler was surprised, even a little offended, at such a modest prize, but he ordered his treasure treasurer to count out the rice. Why is the ruler surprised? Make him, what makes him think the inventor requested a modest prize? Okay, the ruler is surprised because he hears a few grains mentioned. It seems very little, but he does not think through the effect of doubling each collection of grains. He does not know that the amount of needed rice will grow exponentially. Okay, so it says here the treasurer took more than a week to count the rice in the ruler's store, only to notify the ruler that it would take more rice than was available in the entire kingdom. Shortly thereafter, as the story goes, the inventor became the new king. B. Imagine the treasurer counting the needed rice for each of the 64 squares. We know that the first square is assigned a single grain of rice, and each successive square is doubled the number of grains of rice of the previous square. The following table lists the first five assignments of grains of rice to squares on the board. How can we represent the grains of rice as exponential expressions? Okay, since we're doubling every time, our base is two. So we're taking two to a power. So two to the zero is one. Two to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. And 2 to the fourth power is 16. Now it says to write the exponential expression that describes how much rice is assigned to each of the last three squares of the board. Well, notice that the first square is 0, second square is 1, fourth square is or four, fifth square, the fifth square is 2 to the 4, so it's 1 degree less than the number of squares. So 62 would be 2 to the 61. 63 would be 2 to the 62. And 64 is 2, not 64. 64 is 2 to the 63rd power. Example 2. Let us understand the difference between f of n equals 2n and f of n equals 2 to the power of n. So first let's fill in this equation, f of n equals 2n, let's fill in this table. So if negative 2 is substituted in here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 
0 times 2 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. So this is increasing by 2 every time. If I take 2 to the negative 2, remember our rules for fractions or our negative exponents, 2 to the negative 2 equals 1 divided by 2 squared. So we take the reciprocal of two, this, flip it over, and make the power positive. So that would be 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the positive 1, or simply 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. So this doubled, this doubled, and 2 to the 1 is 2. So that doubled, and 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. I'm sorry. It's not 3 squared, it's 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. So we have a quarter, a half, 1, 2, 4, 8. So they're doubling as we go. Complete the table below and then graph the points n through f of n on the coordinate plane for each of the formulas. Okay, so I changed the colors of my exponential growth so I can graph these using the colors we used. So if I go over to negative 2 and down to negative 4, this is the point negative 2, negative 4. And then if I go negative 1, left 1, down 2, that's negative 1, negative 2. The origin is 0, 0. Over 1, up 2. Over 2, up 4. And over 3, up 6. Okay, so those are, that's the graph of our linear. So I'm, it looks straight, so I'm going to get a ruler, and I'm going to connect those dots using a ruler. just to show you that they are definitely aligned. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, so now I'm going to graph the green ones, which is negative 2 down a quarter, which is... or up a quarter, I mean, that's positive. Negative 2 up a quarter forgot to change the color of my pen. No, I didn't. It just refused to do what I asked it to do. Right there. Negative 1, 1 half. 1, or 0, 1. 1, 2. 2, 4. Three, eight. So as you can see, this is coming like this. It's coming up and it's hard to draw this and go really slow something like that okay so you see that as it's going up it actually was less than the linear and then it came back and it started growing faster Okay, so I cleaned this up a little bit just to show you that if we start at the same domain of negative 2 and finish at the same domain of 3, then our range from negative 2 to 3 is graphed. I didn't extend it any further, but you see that as this increases at a steady pace, the green one starts slower, but then picks up momentum and becomes a greater value quicker. Okay, so now it says describe the change in each sequence when n increases by one unit for each sequence. So for sequence f of n equals 2n, the, the red one, for every increase in n by one unit, f of n value increased by 2. For the sequence f of n equals 2 to the n, for every increase in n by one unit, the f of n value increased by a factor of 2. Exercise 1. A typical thickness of toilet paper is 0 0.001 inch. This seems pretty thin, right? Let's see what happens when we start folding toilet paper. How thick is the stack of toilet paper after one fold, two folds, five folds? Okay, so if we're going to use an exponential equation here, what we're going to write is this number here. So after one fold, it would be 0 
0, 1 times, now we're doubling it, so that our, ba our base is 2 to the power of how many folds, which is 1, which would equal 0 0.002. Okay, so we just doubled that. Now if I fold it a second time, then it'd be 0 0.001 times 2 squared, which is 4 times this, which is 0 0.004. Three folds, never mind three, we're skipping to five now. Five folds would be 0 0.001 times 2 to the fifth power which equals 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. So 2 to the fifth is 32, so that would equal 0 0.032. Now it says to write an explicit formula for the sequence that models the thickness of the fold, folded toilet paper after n folds. So it's a function f with respect to n, so f of n equals and it's going to be 0 0.001 times 2 to the power of n. After how many folds does the stack of folded toilet paper pass the one foot mark? Okay, well, the one foot mark is 12 inches, and this is measured in inches, so the 12 inch mark. So, if we keep going, we're going to get 0 0.64, 1 point, 0 0.128, 0 0.2, and so on and so on. Um, so let's just try a couple of numbers. So if I do f of 10, that'd be 0 0.001 times, let me fix that, times 2 to the 10th power. Well, what's 2 to the 10? 2 times 2 is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1,024. So that would equal 1,024 or 1.024 inches. So 10 wasn't enough. Let's try 15. Okay, and as you can see here, this is very tedious, so I'm going to do something differently now. There is a way to solve this, but we're not in Algebra 2 yet, and it's called logarithms. Um, but just one moment, we can use a calculator. Okay, so the easiest way for me to explain this is to graph it and show you what's happening with the graph. So I graphed it in the website GeoGebra, so we are looking for f of something to equal more than 12 inches. Okay, so I, I want my y to be more than 12 inches. So when I, sub, when I plug that in, okay, first of all, here is the graph of 0 0.001 times 2 to the n. They use x, of course. So right here, it's very thin, very thin, very thin, and then all of a sudden we start going up. Now let's look at what we've got so far. I did f of 10 and got 1.024. So if I go here, see if that's right. f of 10 is one point really close to 1.024. So it's just a smidgen above 10 and a 1, and that is what I got, 1.024. So we want to know when it exceeds 12 inches. So I drew the line equation y equals 12, and it's the horizontal line here. And now if I drew a vertical line straight down, 13 is right here. So obviously we aren't more than 12 inches at 13 folds, but at 14 folds, it shot all the way up to 16, over 16 inches. Okay, so it took 14 folds. Okay, so it's after, at, oh, it's up here, after 
14 volts. Okay, D, the moon is about 240,000 miles from Earth. Compare the thickness of the toilet paper folded 50 times to the distance from Earth. So we're going to do F of 50. So it's 0 0.001 times 2 to the 50th power. So I'll go back to my paper, graph paper, and look to see where we are when x is 50. Okay, so I'm going to draw a vertical line at x equals 50. Okay, and then I'm going to go look for it. So I want to know when my graph crosses x equals 50. So I'm zooming out and panning up. Okay, so wow, look at that. And it usually puts a dot where they intersect, I'm thinking. Maybe not. Okay, so here's 50. Remember this is inches, 10,000 inches, and it just keeps going and going and going. Let me zoom out until I can't see the two lines. And just keep scrolling and zoom in and check them. Okay, I'll pause this until I find it. Okay, that value is just way too big to look at this graphically, so I just plugged it into uh, my TI calculator, and I got this to equal, let me see, okay, so it says, 1.12589907 times 10 to the 12th power, which means it moved this is scientific notation, so it moved this decimal place 12 to the right. Okay, I then had to now this is in inches, remember, and they're talking about miles. So in order to get this into miles, when we're talking inches, we have to divide by 5,280 feet per mile. And when I divide that by 5,280, I get 213, 238-618. Point seven. That is feet. So when I divide by 12, then I get inches or folds. So it is, or miles, I mean. I'm going from inches to miles. So this will be 17,000 or million, 769,885 miles. Okay, so if we fold that toilet paper 50 times, we'll be at 17 million miles, and the moon is 240,000 miles from Earth, so it's about, so, hey Siri, what is one, let me try that again, hey Siri, hey Siri, what is 17,769,885 divided by 240,000? 17,769,885 divided by 240,000 is about 74.0411. Okay, so what that means is if we took that really thin piece of toilet paper and folded it 50 times, it would be as thick as 74 trips to the moon, the distance from Earth to moon. That's just absolutely crazy. So here's a link to watching the following video, how folding paper can get you to the moon.
Okay, so I encourage you to watch the following video here at this link. Okay, it's a really good TED Ed video. It's about three minutes long, and it's got a great explanation of how folding is exponential. All right, so let's move on to exercise two. A rare coin appreciates at a rate of 5.2% a year. If the initial value of the coin is $500, after how many years will its value cost $3,000 million or $3,000 mark? Show a formula that models the value of the coin after T years. Okay, so let's do the formula first. So it's F of T, since it's a function of time. And F of T is going to equal our initial value of $500. And we are going to multiply that by 5.2%, which is 1.052. Okay, 100%. So we're increasing it by 52 or 5.2%, which is 1.052. And we're going to take that to the power of t. So if Scholl formula that models value of the coin after t years, there it is. And it says, after how many years will its value cross the $3,000 mark? Okay. And again, plugging that in our calculator, it will be between $35 and 36 years. I won't take the time to plug that in the calculator, but if we graph this, like I did in, in GeoGebra, then between 35 and 36 is when it would reach 500. Okay, that is the end of lesson five. Go to your problem set.